We all saw it posted yesterday all over our social media pages. Cassie filed a lawsuit in New York City against Diddy. Yikes. She's claiming she was... Yesterday, it was shared on every social media platform. Cassie fought a lawsuit in New York City against Diddy. She's claiming she was stuck in a decade-long cycle of abuse. Why doesn't the government want him to turn himself in? Because then they can't ask for detention, so they go and they arrest them. They arrest a guy who came to New York to turn himself in. What would you do if you had everything, the fame, the fortune, the influence, and then in an instant it all started slipping through your fingers? The spotlight can be a powerful thing, and it seems like for Sen Diddy C. Yes. Glare is becoming too much to handle. Imagine a man at the very top of his game in the music industry credited for shaping an era and amassing a staggering fortune, suddenly facing a cascade of accusations and scandals that threaten to destroy everything he built. How does someone go from being a hip-hop icon to sitting in a courtroom fighting for his freedom and reputation? I think in federal court, and for these charges, they would say it's routine. But in the public realm, this is very significant just from who we associate did he being and everything we've seen him do over the decades. Like you said, this is quite the downfall to go from. I mean, we saw the mansions back back in March that were raided by the Fed. So to go from living in those mansions to being in the jail cell, right, to fully understand how Diddy's story spiraled into what many are calling one of the most shocking downfalls in music history. You have to go back and examine the empire. He created his brand with musicians like the notorious Big Faith Evans and even up. And coming stars Diddy's vision, Bad Boy Tunes was more than just a record label. It was a cultural powerhouse that did more than simply put smash tunes on the charts. It started a movement. Bad Boy wasn't just a name. It was an identity, attitude, and way of life for millions of people. Through this brand, Diddy amassed an estimated nine-figure fortune making him one of the richest people in hip-hop. However, as the fall progressed and more and more troubling information came to light, his empire seemed more fragile than ever. Sean Diddy Combs was arrested after being seen in this video entering the Park Hyatt Hotel in Midtown Manhattan with other people. Homeland Security investigation agents approached, separated Combs, placed him under arrest, and led him out the front door in handcuffs. For a man who once seemed untouchable, the reality now is that he's being portrayed as someone who used status to manipulate and control, leaving a trail of damage behind him. This must be a complete culture shock. The whispers and rumors began as just a few voices here and there, but as the accusations mounted, it became impossible to ignore former friends, employees, and even close associates coming forward. Each one reveals a darker side of Diddy's world where fame and fortune collided with secrecy and power in ways that are both shocking and unsettling. Jay-Z is arguably the only other person in hip-hop who is on par with Diddy. Both men have established legacies that go far beyond music, moving into business, entertainment, and philanthropy, each building an empire. However, this is where things get complicated. As Jay-Z has continued to rise, aligning himself with brands, companies, and ventures that elevate his influence. I can't imagine living the lifestyle of the extremely rich and famous, and then going into this very dark, impersonal, cold, austere facility. Diddy's legacy is currently tainted by controversy and an unexpected turn of events. Following their split from Diddy, Jay-Z has now consented to testify against his old pal, an extraordinary action that has sparked suspicions of betrayal, retaliation, and a power grab. Jay-Z will be revealed next, right? Given his network and power base, some insiders think Jay-Z's decision to testify isn't only a moral one. Consider this. Jay-Z has his own goals, and some believe he is using the scandal to destroy his main opponent. When Jay-Z takes the stand, two men who previously worked together on charitable events, business transactions, and even social causes find themselves on opposing sides of one of the largest disputes in recent memory. The animosity between these two titans may have seemed unthinkable just a few years ago, but recent events suggest that their past collaborations may have been less about camaraderie and more about strategy. These weren't just business deals, they were power moves orchestrated to cement influence and control over an entire industry, while the public watched them as partners. 
Jay-Z claims that this could be the perfect opportunity to remove Diddy from his throne. In an empire built on influence, anyone who gets in the way can find themselves pushed out of the picture. Diddy's fall from grace doesn't end there. His alleged wild gatherings where fame and debauchery allegedly mingled freely are a far cry from the pristine public image Diddy attempted to project. There was always an underlying competition, and now that Jay-Z has decided to testify, everyone is wondering if this is just about speaking out or if there is a calculated plan at work. I'm not sure if you know his voice, but I felt like I was in the presence of his monster inside. Some former employees and participants claim that these events were anything from innocent. They depict a world in which networking meant something completely different and exceedingly exclusivity, and power games were the true source of entertainment. Insiders claim that Diddy's behavior started to raise eyebrows at these gatherings, which were attended by celebrities, top executives, and household names. These events pushed boundaries in ways that only those with extreme influence can manage, including accusations that Colmes had cameras throughout his home. Former attendees have told tales of high-profile celebrities and famous guests who left feeling uneasy after realizing that what they had assumed would be a glamorous event was actually something quite different. They say that what goes on in these circles is kept hidden because of power and influence. But as testimonies are coming out and former attendees are speaking up, the public is starting to see past the glittering facade. What was once thought to be elite parties is now being revealed as something much darker. If he was actually filming everyone, let me see. Even though there isn't any hard proof that Diddy was personally responsible for their actions, his ties to other questionable people like Jeffrey Epstein and R. Kelly have surfaced, raising even more suspicion. His association with these well-known individuals has stoked conjecture about what actually occurs behind the scenes in the music industry. According to some rumors, Diddy's close relationships with these individuals were not just social, rather, they were a part of an invisible network in which each member played a part. For some, Diddy's relationships with these disgraced individuals feel like pieces of a puzzle that allude to a side of the business that is as covert as it is sinister and stacy. You say the indictment now resembles a mob indictment. What shocked you the most about all of these accusations, Jake? The government's evidence in this indictment that Sean Conn was operating a criminal enterprise, as well as the connections between Epstein and R. Kelly, have only heightened public interest by painting a picture of an underground world governed by hidden threats and unwritten rules. The idea that Diddy might have been a part of such a network is enough to chill anyone. And as the scandal develops, people are left wondering just how deep his connections went, what these associations went, and what these associations really meant. The rumors are that Diddy was running some sort of Epstein-type deal where he was filming everyone, and I'm not sure that there's any proof of anything other than that. Then there's the theory that has taken the internet by storm, which holds that Diddy and Jay-Z were always planning events in the industry as covert puppet masters. This suggests that these two did more than just establish music empires, they also managed careers, chose who would succeed and who would fail, and eliminated anyone who threatened their hegemony. There are several posts on social media that analyze anything from interviews to red carpet events, all of which speculate on the veracity of the claim that Diddy and Jay-Z controlled the business like marionettes on a stage. You think Diddy is dangerous? I did, and for years, fans have analyzed every move Diddy made in an attempt to find evidence of this covert power play. Innocent gestures like a sidelong glance, handshake, or subtle nod now have new significance, as individuals watch old recordings thinking they are uncovering. There are hints of a conspiracy that has been concealed, and as Diddy's world begins to fall apart, these beliefs have only gotten stronger thanks to the facts.